Welcome, Christian Freeland, the Wicked Witch of the East. Taking from your wallet to pay for her feast. Watch out for this one. She sounds of good intention. She'll turn you against your neighbor with cunning and deception. As she drains the life from our beautiful country, guard your heart and soul from her dark, twisted party. Okay. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, and I really want to thank Mark and Caitlin uh, for hosting us in their beautiful home, in their beautiful backyard today. Um, Caitlin is a nurse um, who takes care of trauma and burn victims. Uh, thank you very much for your work. It's so important. I'm really grateful to you. Um, Mark is an urban planner at Toronto Metropolitan University. Um, and um, I've had a wonderful conversation with them, uh, hearing uh, directly from them about what it's like uh, to be a young couple in Canada, uh, launching them in Canada, in Toronto. Uh, launching themselves on sort of the adult stage of their life. Um, and congratulations on your upcoming wedding in the fall. That's very exciting. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging that we're gathered on the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. Aujourd'hui, beaucoup trop de jeunes ont l'impression qu'ils sont au pied du mur. Ils ont beau décrocher un bon emploi et travailler fort. Bien trop souvent, la récompense d'une vie sûre et prospère dans la classe moyenne reste hors de leur portée. Nous voulons qu'ils soient récompensés pour tout ce travail. Et nous avons un plan pour aider toutes les générations, en particulier les jeunes à prospérer. One of the biggest pressures on Canadians right now is housing. And we know that this is especially true for younger Canadians. Faced with a shortage of housing options and increasingly high rent and home prices, many younger Canadians feel that the dream of home ownership is just that, a dream. Our government is changing that. We want home ownership to be a reality for younger Canadians. And the measures I'm announcing today will help set them up for success. One of, those, one of the first steps to getting those first keys of your own is saving for a down payment. We know this step is also one of the biggest hurdles to home ownership. That's why in the spring of last year, our government introduced the tax-free first home savings account. The tax-free first home savings account allows Canadians to contribute up to $40,000 towards the purchase of their first home. Like an RRSP, contributions are tax deductible. And like a TFSA, withdrawals to purchase a first home are non-taxable. It is tax-free in, tax-free out. Today, only a year after the launch, I am really, really glad to announce that more than 750,000, three quarters of a million of Canadians have opened a tax-free first home savings account. This account is making a real difference for Canadians and it is clear that younger Canadians want to buy a first home of their own. And they are saving their hard earned dollars to turn that dream into a reality. Another program our government has in place to help Canadians pull together a down payment is the Home Buyers Plan. It allows Canadians to withdraw funds from their RRSP to buy their first home. Like the tax-free first home savings account, RRSPs are great vehicles to save for a down payment because contributions are tax deductible and any income earned in the RRSP is tax exempt. Right now, you can withdraw up to $35,000 from your RRSP to use toward a down payment. In many cities in Canada though, that's not enough. 
Younger Canadians know they need to save more for longer to afford that first down payment. So, to help Canadians purchase their first home, today I'm announcing that we are increasing the withdrawal limit for the home buyer's plan from $35,000 to $60,000, effective April 16th this year. This, plus the tax-free first home savings account, can be combined, which will give younger Canadians more tools to save what is actually needed for a down payment. We're also giving Canadians an extra three years to repay the amount they withdraw under the home buyer's plan. Canadians who made withdrawals any time between January 1st, 2022 through to December 31st, 2025 will now have a full five years before they need to start repayment so they can focus on their mortgage payments and other costs. Once you've saved for that first down payment, the next step to owning a home is qualifying for a mortgage. And a big part of qualifying for a mortgage is ensuring you can pay the monthly costs that come with it. For many younger Canadians, these costs are a significant barrier to home ownership. That's why today we're announcing new enhancements to the Canadian Mortgage Charter. The charter details the tailored mortgage relief that Canadians can expect from their banks if they are in a challenging financial situation. Effective August 1st of this year, we are allowing 30-year amortizations on insured mortgages for first-time home buyers purchasing newly built homes. That, of course, includes condos and townhouses. First-time home buyers will now have 30 years to pay off their mortgage instead of 25. That translates to lower monthly payments, so more younger Canadians can afford to pay that monthly mortgage on a new home. After you get those first keys of your own, we also want to make sure Canadians who own their home are protected. We know that some homeowners are concerned about their mortgage payments and about renewing their mortgages at a higher rate. To further support these Canadians, we're announcing stronger measures through the Canadian Mortgage Charter that include making sure lenders contact borrowers up to 24 months in advance of a homeowner's mortgage renewal so that homeowners have ample time to learn about the options available to them and to make informed decisions. The new stronger measures in the Canadian Mortgage Charter also include providing permanent amortization relief to all homeowners including insured homeowners at risk without any fees or penalties. For example, let's say a homeowner with an insured 25-year mortgage is experiencing financial hardship. Last year, that homeowner worked with their bank to have their mortgage amortization temporarily extended to 35 years to lower their monthly mortgage payments. Now, with the strengthened Canadian Mortgage Charter, depending on the homeowner's circumstances, this extension can be made permanent so that their monthly costs stay low for as long as they need. Because Canadians work really hard to be able to buy and afford their homes. And it is only fair that mortgage lenders should help Canadians do everything they can to afford their homes at a time of higher interest rates. These are all real tangible measures that are going to help more Canadians get into the housing market and buy their first home while protecting Canadians who already own their own home. Notre gouvernement est entré en fonction en promettant de renforcer et d'élargir la classe moyenne. Nous avons tenu cet engagement en réduisant la pauvreté en particulier celle des enfants 
et des personnes âgées et en créant des millions de bons emplois pour les Canadiennes et les Canadiens. Notre travail n'est pas terminé. Nous continuons à travailler pour ouvrir la voie vers la classe moyenne à des millions de jeunes Canadiennes et Canadiens. Dans tout ce que nous faisons, nous voyons à garder le rêve d'une vie meilleure à la portée de nos jeunes générations. Parce que vous le méritez. Et parce que c'est aussi ce que vos parents et vos grands-parents vous souhaitent. Merci beaucoup et je suis prête à répondre à vos questions. And if you could speak up, oh, good, because there's a little background noise. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Minister Freeland. Sarah Sears from CBC. Good to see you on this rainy day. Yes, good to see you too, Sarah. Thank you for being here. I hope you're not getting too wet. Of course not. Um, look, your government has pledged a lot of new spending announcements in recent days ahead of the budget. You know, what does this mean for the deficit? And what does this mean for fiscal you know, restraint from your government? Will we see the deficit grow? No. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to give a longer answer to you. So um, when we first formed government in 2015, we were elected on a commitment to make the necessary investments in Canada and Canadians and to do it in a fiscally responsible way. That continues to be our approach today. Oh, we recognize that Canada today needs our government to invest. We need to invest urgently in housing. We need to get more homes built faster, and that requires the federal government to step up, and we are. You know, I had a great conversation, a very nice cup of coffee with Mark and Caitlin, and they have a beautiful house. They have lots of friends and peers who haven't been able to afford their own home, but want to. And it is our government's job to work collaboratively with provinces, territories, municipalities, private sector, public sector to get those homes built. That requires investments, and we are going to be there. We are there to make those investments. We also absolutely recognize the importance of acting in a fiscally responsible way within a fiscally responsible framework. Canada today has the lowest debt and the lowest deficit in the G7. We have a AAA rating, which has been repeatedly reaffirmed. And in the fall economic statement, we published some specific fiscal guideposts um, that we said would guide our public finances going forward. We are committed to adhering to those guideposts. And as a follow, Where is this new revenue coming from, and are we going to see new taxes like a wealth tax in the budget? Et uh, en français, s'il vous plaît. Bien sûr. En anglais, très bien. Okay, okay, okay. J'ai compris. Alors, um, so, uh, as I said, um, we recognize there is an urgent need for investments in Canada, and we are going to make those investments. To do otherwise would be simply irresponsible. We also recognize how important it is to act in a fiscally responsible way. When we formed government in 2015, our credo was supporting the middle class and those working hard to join it. And in fact, we were elected on a commitment to ask those at the top to pay a little bit more so that we could provide a tax cut to the middle class. And we did just that. I want to assure Canadians that our belief is we need to invest in middle class Canadians, support middle class Canadians, and we will not be raising taxes on the middle class. Uh, notre gouvernement était élu en 2015 avec une promesse, une promesse d'investir, 
d'investir dans la classe moyenne, d'investir dans notre pays, dans le Canada, et de le faire en manière responsable du côté fiscal. Aujourd'hui, on continue avec cette approche. Nous comprenons que le Canada a tellement besoin des investissements. Des investissements dans le logement, évidemment. Les investissements dans l'infrastructure qui permettent la construction du logement. Les investissements dans l'économie. Je suis tellement fière qu'on a annoncé des investissements importants dans l'intelligence artificielle dimanche. C'est très important, c'est un investissement dans notre avenir, dans la croissance économique. Et on comprend l'importance de faire ces investissements avec une approche qui est responsable du côté fiscal. On le fait. Euh, le Canada a aujourd'hui la dette et le déficit le plus faible dans tout le G7. On a une cote de crédit triple A qui a été réaffirmée plusieurs fois. Et dans l'énoncé économique de l'OTAN, euh, on a publié euh, une approche spécifique concernant les prochains budgets. Euh, et on va continuer de suivre cette approche responsable du côté fiscal. Okay, well, thank you very, very much, everyone, for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry people got wet, um, but I'm glad you're here. Um, I uh, really hope and believe the specific measures we announced today are going to provide a lot of comfort and a lot of hope to young Canadians. It's so important for me that young Canadians know that we are on their side, that we know how important it is that the promise of Canada remains open and available to them. And that includes being able to buy your first home. The measures we announced today are really going to help young Canadians do that. And I know that they're working so hard to buy their first home. Those 750,000 young Canadians who've opened a first home savings account, they're working hard, they're saving their money, they want to buy a first home. The measures we've announced today are going to help them. Thank you very much. Comment, like, and subscribe. And join if you can. You've been served.